Devil May Cry 5, a game that fans have been waiting for for a pretty long time. And we haven't gotten a Devil May Cry game since Devil May Cry 4, which came out in January 2008, I believe. It's 2019 now, so it's been about 11 years since we've gotten a Devil May Cry game, not counting the special edition of DMC4. Or DMC Devil May Cry with uh, with Dante, uh, Emo Dante, however you want to, whatever you want to call him. Um, that game wasn't even developed by Capcom, though by Ninja Theory. I believe it was published by Capcom. And it was a uh, lackluster reboot to the, to the series. But anyways, we're not going to talk about that. We're here to talk about Devil May Cry 5. And oh boy, I have quite a bit to talk about. I'm a member of We Got Game Channel, and I'm here to bring you the sick review of Devil May Cry 5. So here we go. The story of Devil May Cry is actually pretty simple, whether or not you've played any of the previous Devil May Cry games or read the manga, I believe they have a manga, and, or if you watch the anime or anything like that, like Devil May Cry 5 story is pretty simple. So to start off, this game takes place in between, I want to say like two months, and I believe in like the first month that they showed, well most of the game takes place within most of the game takes place within like this one month, right? But at the beginning, Nero gets his demonic arm ripped off and just ripped off and just snatched from this demon that wants to use the power that was absorbed into his demon arm to become this all-powerful demon in Yurizin that goes and that goes and uses his power to summon a demonic tree from hell that's called the Clyphoth. And the purpose of the Clyphoth is to grow and grow and grow so that it can bear these um, these devil fruits that then Yurizin can use to become a powerful demon to conquer the world, I'm guessing. I'm, it's the world of the city. I'm pretty sure it's the world maybe to conquer heaven and hell or earth and hell, whatever. What? Either way, that's pretty much the gist of it. Now Dante is here because Morrison gave him a gig that was asked by that was requested by this character named V. And V, as you'll see at pretty early on in the game, V knows a lot about what's going on and we barely know the character. V is a brand new character to the series. Like like I was saying, V is kinda suspicious. V goes off as this guy that he seems like he has some he has some issue or some deal with this demon Eurozen. And he needs to see he needs to see this mission um complete. He needs to see this mission through with Dante for some reason that he really does not tell at the begin at the beginning of the game. As the game goes on, as you get deeper into the game, you will start to learn these intentions and everything like that and like why he wants to see yours and defeated and all that stuff but as of right now for the sake of for the sake of saving you guys spoilers and everything that's just how we're gonna roll I'm not gonna speak any more on I'm not gonna speak any more on it that's pretty much the basis of it now one of the things I like about Devil May Cry and it's like a a lot of Capcom games in general is that their games, like games like Devil May Cry and Resident Evil and stuff, like tend tend to look serious on the surface. But as you go and you play the games and you start to learn the characters, well, this is more so for Devil May Cry. Like the game doesn't really seem that serious, even though it portrays it to be serious on a surface level. The game is really goofy and it's really funny. <laughs> Um, like just like the way the characters taunt in the game when you're in combat and everything, the way the characters interact with each other and just things like that, and it's like especially like V's taunt. V's taunts are hilarious. Um, 
Dante is just this cool guy. He just owns up to all his stuff. He's just he knows what he wants to do. And Nero's just like some just some rude bad mouth kid. Like he he has a good heart, but he's just like he just has like such a bad mouth. The way he just talks, he just talks crap and just talks smack to all these demons. And like the way he talks to Dante, and like and all of a sudden it's 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 great. It's, it's it's hilarious and the way he interacts with Nico. I think that's those two characters have like the best interactions in the game. And Nico, oh my God, Nico, Nico is such a great character. She's as you as you figure out at the beginning of the game that she's the daughter of Agnes from Devil May Cry 4. The dude, the dude that I think was like he was like a scientist in Devil May Cry 4 for the Order, I believe. Um, he abandoned his daughter Nico and the mother. And like Nico doesn't like give a damn about Agnes at all. Like she was, she was even even at the beginning of the game. Nero was like, so, uh, how's it feel? How's it feel to be safe from the guy that killed your father? And then Nico's like, Nico's pretty much like, yeah, I don't care about him. Like he, he, he she's pretty much like, he can just ride him. I was like, oh wow. <laughs> all right. Well, I guess that makes sense. Um, yeah, but Nico, Nico six, she's pretty much like your mechanic of the game. She gives Nero all these um. All like these cybernetic arms that he can use in combat and everything. She has like a lot of cool stuff, by the way. All the like all the devil arms that she gives you, or the devil breakers that she gets, they're all really cool. Um, and she and she's just like she's just such like a badass character. I love Nico. She's great. And also another thing, just so I just want to say real quick, the characters each character feels distinct and they feel true to themselves as a character. Even like Lady and Trish, even though we don't get too much of Lady and Trish, actually, well, no, Lady was way more serious in three, and she didn't really get that much time in four. I think Lady was in like one or two cutscenes in Devil May Cry four, but I guess I don't know what happened between three and five. Lady was like super serious, but then again, she wanted to like kill her father and all those nonsense. But um, but in five, she's a lot cheerer, a lot more chill. <laughs> Um, by the way, Lady looks damn good, by the way, Lady, oh my god, Lady, yes. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, but that's to say, all the characters feel true to themselves, and I, I really like that about Devil May Cry 5. Alright, now let's go down to talk about the graphics and the presentation of the game. Alright, so... For anyone that has played Devil May Cry before, you know that the game presents itself in this crazy, like super, re like, like hyper realistic, like this super stylish, fun way. You get that from the very jump. You, they, the developers let you know what the game is about from the very beginning of the game. I remember when I first played Devil May Cry 3, and this was the first Devil May Cry game I played. I remember when I first played that game with that introduction cutscene with Dante sitting in his office and he's and he the demons show up in his office and he sh and he turns on the jukebox and the music starts playing and he starts just like whooping their ass in just like this crazy stylish kind of way you knew what kind of game you were getting into like it, that that's the kind of game that DMC5 is maybe that and more honestly because the way the game presents itself to you is like you're, you're going to have a lot of fun playing this game you're gonna be you're gonna be kicking some serious ass. You're gonna you know, pull off these crazy combos. You're gonna do all this crazy stuff that you see in the cutscenes and everything. And not only and not only that, you're really gonna like get to know who these characters are and get to know how they, how they act because that's that's literally what Devil May Cry is. You really get to understand Dante, Nero, and V. Uh, at least at least how they behave and everything, how they fight all demons and how they interact with each other and everything like that. And uh, like I said, the game presents itself in a, in the way that you expect it to. It, the game plays based off of that presentation. And also the graphics, oh my God, this is some of the best in in game graphics and C and CG. This is some of the this game is one of the best looking games I played in a very long time. And I'm not just talking about like visually like I'm not just talking about just how like with the um, CG looks and everything. I'm talking about how the gameplay plays 
with the graphics if you if you understand what i'm saying like it look like everything just looks good everything looks clean when you do it nothing really looks unpolished or out of place or anything like that everything just looks very good and i also and i also like so this is like i said this is one of the best looking games i played in a and i in a long time, not kind of Kingdom Hearts 3, because Kingdom Hearts 3 visually looked amazing as well. But we're not talking about Kingdom Hearts 3. But the, it's, it just looks everything just looks very clean. Everything looks very good. Um, nothing really seemed off to me. Um, one thing, um, a, a pet peeve of mine in um in like with video games when it comes to like cutscenes and everything is good lip syncing. I really like good lip syncing, and I just think it. I really just think that um. It just makes cutscenes look better, and it doesn't look awkward when characters, when you know when characters' uh, mouths don't match like the words that they're saying, or, like the words don't match like them mouthing or anything like that. I really, I really like it when there's good lip syncing in a game. Um, so from what I saw, it looked pretty good to me. Well, yeah, that's all I really had to say about the, the graphics and the presentation. Like I said, they work extremely well with the game. Very, very, very good job, Capcom. Good job. Thank you. Now, the music section of the game, I'm not going to talk about it for too long but what i will say is that the music in the game was very well placed for the proper situations in the game now there wasn't music blasting in your ear like literally the entire time that you're playing the game because sometimes when you're sometimes um during missions you won't be any music at all playing but when the battle but when you encounter enemies you know that battle theme music that starts right and what I what I really like is like number one, each character has their own has their own battle music, has their own battle theme, which I think is sick. And, uh, I believe Nero's a Devil Trigger, and then you have uh, Dante's theme, which is like Subhuman. I, when I listened to Subhuman, actually, when I listened to Subhuman before the game came out, I thought that theme was trash, like everyone else. But I'm pretty sure, like for the for the battle theme, it's not that bad because number one, I don't most of the time I don't even pay, I don't even notice a guy because like the guy like screaming all the time like the vocalist screaming all the time in the song so I, it's not that bad and it really and like i said it really like it it, su it suits it suits the battle theme for dante and like these these battle theme i don't remember exactly what it's called but i do like his as well like like i said it's just it really does give that feeling that you know you're just fighting off demons and you're just kicking some serious ass and that's what i really like about the music it re it's really well placed and it just fits the game very well fits each character very well especially like in the cuts and like the music i plays in some of the cuts and everything like that I, I i like it a lot and plus like they're bangers like come on man all right now it is time for the meat and potatoes of this entire review the gameplay Oh my goodness. <laughs> the gameplay it feels it feels exactly like a Devil May Cry game. And more, I should say. Not and the only reason I say that is because number one, you get to play as three different characters. Nero v Dante. And each character is distinctly different in how they play. First of all, Nero has the cyber uh the cybernetic arm, so not only are you slashing away with Red Queen and you're shooting and you're shooting bullets out of uh, Blue Rose and everything like that, but you're also using these different cybernetic arms that he gets from Nico, and then you're just pulling off all these crazy different combos and these crazy different um stylish looking um stylish looking kills of Nero with with like the whole with the huge variety of 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 Devil Breakers that he has to choose from. Like you get, I believe you get Overture and Gerbera at the beginning, and then you also get what else um throughout the game you get um rawhide which i think is a chain um the chain one you get the one that uh breaks guards i forgot which i forgot what that was called it's kind of like a piercing one to piercing devil break you get tomboy which is which upgrades your blue rose and your and your red queen attacks 
but um, the drawback is that you cannot lock on the enemies with that. And then, uh, like I see, the chain one is cool because you can wrap enemies around like chains and like kind of fling them around. Uh, and also each, and what I should say is that each um, Devil Breaker has, I guess you could say, two different attacks. Um, this the standard, the standard circle, or or B if you're playing on Xbox. I guess the standard, um, the standard attack where if you press circle or B on the Xbox or whatever, um, you get like you get that regular attack. You get that you get that regular attack, but you can't be locked on the enemies when you do it. Because if you lock if you lock on the enemies and you press uh and you press the devil breaker attack, you'll get the you'll get the snap you'll get the snatch move. So you have to make sure that you're not locked on when you're doing that. And then you also get the you also get the version to move that you use if you charge up your devil breaker. And that's the one that will cause that will cause your um devil breaker to break. They're fragile. So but you get to choose between three to like however many devil breakers you want to have on each magazine but i think you start the game out with three and you can upgrade it in the shop upgrade your own um, devil breaker slots in the shop um and speaking of the shop uh you like i said in standard devil may cry fashion you can go and exchange your red orbs for more skills and also this time which i really liked what they what they did and what i actually like but they did in dmc devil may cry and they brought over to this game is that you can try out the new skills that you the skills that you're interested in learning you can try them out in the void which is like pretty much the training mode of the game where you can practice your different combos practice how your how your moves work and you can practice this a whole bunch of different crazy stylish combos that you're thinking of and just put a whole bunch of stuff together and everything like that um, that i really like what they did with that i really like what they brought that from dmc devil may cry and they put it in this game actually um, and that wasn't in 4, just to let you guys know, that wasn't in 4, that wasn't in 3, that wasn't in 2, that wasn't in 1. So just so you guys, just so you guys know. Um, and you can also practice it on different enemies too. And you can, and the void is available for each character as well, which is, which, which is what I really like. And I mean, there's also different, um, settings in there, you can have, like, like, unlimited devil breakers, you can make sure that, like, you don't break or anything like that, um, unlimited devil trigger, things like that. Which is what, which is what I really like. I really like that they added those features, added those um features into the um to the training mode, and I also like that they just added the training mode in general. Um, because I, I saw a whole bunch of Twitter clips of people doing these crazy combos and everything. Um, and also it's just like I said, every character's gameplay is very unique. V controls, V controls three different demons. Uh, the Griffin demon, um, which is the bird. The the shadow, which is like the uh, the cat, the jaguar. I don't really know exactly what kind of uh, animal it is from the uh, from the cat family. Um, and then he also controls like this giant nightmare. This I don't even remember, know what the hell that thing is. I I know all of them are from Devil May Cry One. I know that I did play, but I forgot what that thing was called. Um, it's like if you it it'll it only it'll only appear if you use V's Devil Trigger. So he requires DT to use. Um, but yeah, you control all three of these demons um, in uh, tandem with each other, and you can pull off a whole bunch of different like stylish combos with them. And it's really, it's really unique. I like it a lot. I think V's gameplay is really fun, but just I feel like Nero and Dante's gameplay is just like so much better than his. But it's just like you don't even want to play as V. Not saying V's gameplay sucks, cause it doesn't. It's real. It's fun. I like it a lot. It's just that. Uh, um. It's just that like Nero and Dante's gameplay is just there's so much more to do, especially with Dante's. Oh my God, with um with Dante. Actually, before I get into Dante's, I will say that with Nero's Devil Breakers, um, if there's anything that I didn't like is that I can't cycle through Nero's Devil Breakers in the middle of missions. The only way I can go from one Devil Breaker to the next is if it gets broken or if I break it myself. Which by which is by which you would do by um, using the charge version of whatever devil breaker you have, or if you use the breakaway attack, which I think is L1 L1 by default on the PlayStation 4, or I think LB on the Xbox by default. And that's the only way you can go to the next devil breaker. So by breaking breaking it yourself, or it gets broken by an enemy when during while you're using your devil breaker attack. Um. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of different skills you can learn. You can upgrade like everything. I can't even go into everything because there's just so much that you can do. 
and with Dante's gameplay is just like in Devil May Cry 4 and and I guess Devil May Cry 3 where he has the four different styles but in Devil May Cry 4 you can swap to them on the fly and you can do it in this game as well which is what I like so it just goes off so you just have a whole bunch of different ridiculous different styles that you can do at the same time and I'm and I'm and when I'm playing Dante I'm just switching styles on the fly I'll go from Swordmaster to, and I'll combo and if I'm about to get attacked I'll even go Royal Guard and I'll and I'll parry it, or I'll go to Trickster and I'll dash away. And Trickster, <laughs> Trickster, so much fun with the air dash and Gunslinger with the um with the rainstorm off of Ebony and Ivory. Oh my God, there's just so much different things that you can do with Dante. And oh my God, his weapons in this game are so good, especially the mo. I love the motorcycle. Oh my God, it's so sick. You get your sword, you get um the motorcycle. You get the um, the nunchuck, which is like a which is like a three type, which is like a three type attack. You get the fire, I, no, you get the you get the ice nunchucks. Um, from sir, you get the ice nunchucks from sir. You also get thunder, things like some sort of thunder nunchuck, and you also get like a a fire staff. It's like a three it's like a three part um weapon. It's really sick. And what else do you get? Am I missing anything? Um. Like I said, um, am I missing anything? I don't. Oh yeah, and the um, and the Balrog, the uh, the boxing gloves, and the uh, the box, the boxing gloves, and the uh, I don't know what the hell you call them, like the the things you put on your feet to kick with. I, I guess like the kickboxing thing, right? That's really cool too. I like that a lot. You can um, you can just you can just punch as long as you want. You can create cyclones out of your punch and everything. You can do short you can you can do dive kicks. You can break dance. Oh my god, this is so many different things that you can do with Dante. Like, like I said, every character's gameplay is very unique. I really like playing Nero a lot because I can, I can knock enemies away. I can shoot at, and I can like shoot. I can knock them up in the air. I can do charge shots, and I can shoot them. I can knock, I can knock them away, bring them back with the wire snatch, and then slam them back down on the ground, and then use the devil breaker, and I can like, I can plant a bomb inside of them. Oh, <laughs> I know I'm going everywhere with this. I'm sorry, but I'm just so excited. Like, it's very creative. What I really like about the gameplay is that is that it is very, very creative. You can literally do whatever you want, and I really think that, um, I really, I really believe that this is like a hack and slash game done right. I don't like it when all you have to do is just mash buttons. You can't mash in this game because with the, with the way Devil May Cry works. You have a stylish ranking system, and the only way you can get a higher score is if you um is if you um try very hard not to take a lot of damage and don't die, and also don't use your gold orbs because that that gives you a penalty, or your red orbs I believe. And you also have to make sure that you don't keep repeating the same moves over and over again. You have to come up with different combos, different moves. So you start start um start combos with different moves, attack multiple enemies at the same time. Um, make sure you use your exceeds. Make sure you use like your charge moves and everything, and all and all that kind of stuff. And, and also Royal Guard. Royal Guard is ridiculous. You get a lot of points for doing success, successful parries. Um, like I can say the game rewards you for taking advantage of the combat system and the tools that each character has. And there's tons of replay value. If you get a bad rank, you want to go back and you want to make sure you get a good rank on that mission. Like. And like get and like getting triple S in a fight is just so satisfying because I know because you know you're just kicking major, major butt like it's ridiculous. And also another thing is that Devil May Cry games are challenging, and this game is no exception. It's very challenging. It require like it requires you to be skillful and be creative in how you play the game in order to, in order to be good. You can't just mash buttons and expect and expect to win and everything like that. I see people complain saying like. You know, I didn't buy the game to get a dismal rank on every single mission. When well, that's because you're not playing the game right. Play the damn game right instead of complaining. Maybe you're just bad. <laughs> like, come on, you gotta use your head. Like, and but I will say that the base difficulty of the game is a little bit easier compared to the other Devil May Cry games that I played. It is a little like Devil Hunter mode, which is the base difficulty, is a little bit easier. But it's it's still it can still present a challenge. It still presents a, a challenge. But you know, uh, I'm not complaining too much about it, but that's that's just that's just me. Honestly, that's just me. I like game. I like challenging games. I like to test my skill and my wits, and like to be creative. 
hacks and you can do whatever you want in this game and that's one of the things that I love about Devil May Cry it's a hack and slash game but you can but they give you a lot of options and they give you free and they give you freedom to do whatever you want and be creative and you're not just sitting around mashing buttons and just being and just doing like and just playing like mindless gameplay all right in conclusion to this whole entire review devil may cry 5 was an absolute blast i there there's very little that i did not enjoy with this game this game was everything i expected and more because a devil may cry because you ex expect a lot from devil may cry games especially coming from 3 and 4 and everything how great those games were uh but this even even you know everyone that played dmc devil may cry after that you know saying uh, uh you know maybe this game might be that not might not be that great but of course it's gonna be that great of course it's gonna be good because the guy that's working on it knows what he's talking about i forgot i forgot the producer's name of this game uh, but he does a really good job with the games it's not made by ninja theory first of all it's not dmc devil may cry so like you already know the game's gonna be good and it was better than i expected because three is held in high regard in the series but I think this game is better than Devil May Cry 3 it's better it has exceeded my expectations mm, excuse me it has exceeded my expectations and I'm glad because I cause I'm I was excited for this game but to be honest I thought I was just gonna say I was just thinking to myself you know I know this game's gonna be good but like what can they do to like really really like wow me because 4 was good but it didn't like really wow me Rewowed me for a whole bunch of different reasons, but it this game really made me say, "Wow, this game does deserve." I feel like this game is a game of the year uh, contender. It, this game should get nominated for game of the year because this this is a very well put together game in terms of gameplay, music, characters, the story. The story's really good. Like I said, there's very little I have to complain about. There's there's barely any negatives I have about this game. I'm thinking of them. I've been thinking about it for this entire pretty much month and just I don't know what's wrong what's what's bad about this game so and because of that I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 this game deserves a 10 out of 10 in my book some people might say oh man why give it a 10 out of 10 give it a 9 I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 for me personally this game was amazing it's one of the best games I've played in a very long time but there you go guys that is uh that is my review on devil may cry 5 for uh, for we got game expect more of these reviews in the future and this is also like my kind of like my first review my first like actual review that i made so give me some feedback in the comments tell me what you guys think about devil may cry 5 how do you feel about the game for those that have played it or even seen gameplay of it too because you can you can you can make judgment off of looking at gameplay too off looking at how the game looks you don't have to play it but playing it does help a lot but what do you guys think about Devil May Cry 5? Is it good? Do you think it was good? Did it exceed your expectations? Did, um, it's like, you know, just tell me what you guys think in the comments. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time for more uh, We Got Games content, more streams, more podcasts, all that stuff. Peace out, guys. Take care. Oh, wait, and before I go, Bloody Palace mode is out, so y'all better make sure you play Bloody Palace. Oh my god, that's where the fun really begins. But, anyways, yeah, peace out, guys. Take care. Have a good one.